Hello friends, today we will learn pollinate about pollination. So, first we have to learn the four main parts of a flower. First is the calyx. It's the outermost wall of a flower. It protects, it has four to five sepals. The sepals protect it in the bud stage. So, it doesn't break. Next is corolla. It is the second wall of a flower. It consists of all the petals of a flower. Now, these petals are colorful and they are also they also have sweet scents. So, the bees and insects come and take the pollen grains from them to another flower. This helps in the process of pollination. Now, next is endosium. It's the third wall of a flower. It currently consists of a, a group of stamen. So, stamen looks like this. Here, this is the anther and this is the filament. Anther consists of small pollen grains which when mature burst and the pollen grains are set free. About this we learn in the process of pollination. The gynosium. It is a group of pistils or carpels. The top is stigma, then the style and then the ovary. So, the stigma's aim is to catch the small pollen grains and the style takes them to the ovary. Now, in the ovary, there are small ovules. These get fertilized and the ovule forms the seed and the ovary forms the fruit. Now we learn monosexual and bisexual flowers. So here are two flowers. In this there is calyx corolla and endosium. In this there is calyx corolla and gynosium. But the third flower it has both endosium, gynosium, calyx and corolla. So this is a bisexual flower because it contains both the male and the female reproductive part. This, these two are the monosexual flowers. They contain only the only one endosium or gynosium. So was this simple? Now we will learn about pollination. When the pollen grains are sent to the stigma by various agents such as wind, water, air, insects, etc. So, the, the pollen grains go through the style and into the ovary. We learn the process of pollination now. So, when the anther matures, the, it splits open and the pollen grains are set free. These pollen grains go on the same flowers stigma in the case of mono, bisexual flowers only. But if it's a monosexual or bisexual, it can go to another flowers stigma and through style, it goes to ovary. With the ovule, it fertilizes and we get a fruit. So, was this simple? Now, we learn self and cross pollination. In self pollination, it happens only in the case of bisexual flowers. No, this is not correct. It can also happen in case of monosexual flowers. 
So here is a tree and here is a flower. Here is another tree and there is a flower on the top. This splits open and the pollen grains are set free to move. They get on the stigma of this flower and there they fertilize to become a fruit. So this is cross pollination. In self pollination, if here is a flower and the pollen grains are go to the same flowers stigma, but it can it has one more possible case. If there is a tree, it has two flowers. There are many, but these two we'll talk about. So the anther splits and the pollen grains are set free. If they get on the stigma of the fla that flower, but on the same tree, then also itself pollination. Let's take some examples of bisexual and monosexual flowers. Tulip and rose, these are bisexual flowers. They contain both the male and the female gametes. The monosexual flowers are pumpkin, cucumber, papaya, watermelon, etc. They contain only one endosium or gynosium. Thank you. Bye. Have a nice day.